Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Today we're going to make sausage rolls. Well, I say make, really it's more a preparation dish because what we're going to be using today are a series of standard components. Now a standard component is a pre-prepared ingredient that is used in food production. So for example, today we're making sausage rolls and we're using uh, ready-made sausages and we're using pre-rolled puff pastry. So there are two standard components to make our practical easier. Now oftentimes in, in food production, across the board, there are a variety of standard components that are used. For example, there's spaghetti bolognese, uh, where you just buy the ready-made bolognese sauce, or you could have something even as simple as getting a packet of um, breadcrumbs is a standard component because it's a pre-prepared food item that can then be used as part of a recipe. So maybe have a think in your comments, see if you can think of any more standard components that are used across food. Let's get started. It's a really simple dish, it's just two ingredients. So it's more about the preparation than it is about the actual cooking. So let me show you how to make this particular dish. For this dish, I'll be using some vegetarian sausage rolls. These particular ones are from Sainsbury's, I've not tried them before. I'll let you know what it tastes like. They're called Love Your Veg Cumberland Sausages. I got these ones in particular because they have a bit of a, um, a skin around them and with regular meat sausages they'll usually have a skin in them so at least I can show you through that show you that process as well and then we have a pre-rolled puff pastry now of course you could buy a block of puff pastry and roll it yourself but um, in keeping with the theme of standard components not only is it uh, pre-made but it's pre-rolled so that's a, a standard component times two so to speak so let's get into it step one roll out your pastry making sure to keep it on its grease-proof paper. Now step two is just as easy. Now we get our sausages. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut the skin off. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Slide your knife in. Run it along the top. And cut the skin off. Now we only want the meat inside the sausage. Now the question is why? Because if you leave the skin on when you make a sausage, then the sausage meat itself won't cleave to the pastry. So as a pastry bakes, the, the pastry will rise away from the sausage itself and you'll have like a gap between a sausage and the pastry and you won't really feel like, like a pastry. Like you have, you'll be feel like you're having a, a sausage with a slice of pastry, so to speak. But this way, if you cut the skin off and just have the meat part itself, then the meat mixes, bonds with the pastry and becomes a solid thing. So next, you get your sausage roll, leave a three finger gap at the top, three finger gap, and place your sausage. Get another sausage, and repeat. So I'll show you one more time. Get your knife in, slide it in, and just cut away the skin. Peel the skin back, just like that, and you put the next sausage right up next to the first one, don't leave any gaps, right up next to the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my sausages right way across, and then we'll go to the next stage. Okay, we've lined our sausages up all the way all in a row, there's our three finger gap. Now the reason for the three finger gap is so that we have enough space for our pastry to roll over the sausages and stick back onto itself. That's why we need about a three finger gap. So the pastry rolls over itself and then sticks back onto itself. And next, we just cut straight across. Move this one out of the way. So it's going to seal two ends with a fork. This is to stop our pastry rising apart when it's baked. The next step is we're going to put some diagonal slats going across. 
One, they use a slider for decoration, but also two in particular, more importantly, uh, the diagonal slats allow heat to evaporate, like vents that allow heat to evaporate out. Sometimes when we're making a sausage roll, the heat of it can cause space to rise and it can just split apart, not the end of the world. You know, it still goes down the same way, but sometimes if it splits apart, sausage can split out the side. So if presentation is a key thing, which it is for me, then this, the little vents we put in, they act as little pressure relief valves so that when it bakes in the oven, the heat escapes and it also creates a very nice pattern. So we're nearly there now really. The only thing you have to do next is decide how big a sausage rolls we want, uh, divide them up and bake them. So let's see, I'm gonna go for four sausage rolls. Make it easy for myself, I'm gonna cut one in half. And I'll go half again. The final stage, the final stage of our preparation at least, is to just neatly place our sausage rolls on a baking tray. And they're gonna bake in the oven for about 20 minutes or until golden brown and fully puffed up. Now I'm a big believer in not allowing anything to go to waste. We may have a little bit of pastry left over. So rather than just throw it away, I'm gonna quickly make some something out of the pastry we've got left. Something really, really simple. So all I've got, I've got a little bit of some chili flakes here, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion salt, a little bit of rock salt. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna dust some garlic over. Sorry, some onion salt. Followed by some garlic. Followed by just a few chili flakes. And a little bit of rock salt. And then finally, it's a little bit of oregano. Now of course, you can use whatever you like. I'm going to put a little bit of cheese on top of mine as well. Final stage, I'm just going to squash that all in to the pastry itself so it becomes part of it. And I'm going to slice them up and make little cheese, cheese sticks. So This part here just squashed all the flavour together so it becomes part of the pastry itself. So the final stage is going to cut this up into strips and then from just having one product we can see how we can easily get two. Okay we've got our sausage rolls here, we've got our cheesy, chili-ish, herby, rock salty uh, twist, I'm going to bang this in the oven, come back in about 20 minutes. Once you finish, you gotta tidy up. And here we have our cheesy twists with our sausage rolls. So, what do these vegetarian Cumberland sausages actually taste like? So, well, we've got our sausage roll. It looks pretty much like what we expect the sausage roll to look like. Flaky pastry is flaky, but we didn't make that anyway. It's a standard component. But aesthetically, they look pretty good. They look like what you'd expect a sausage roll to look like. So now I'm concerned to be, my concern is now, what these things actually taste like. So I'll cut inside. It looks very much like a sausage roll. Let's taste. Okay, bottoms up. Mm. Quite nice. It's got very much texture of what you expect a sausage roll to have. So it's got the texture of a a real sausage, so to speak. Very subtle flavour, not a very strong flavour. Mm. And taste herbs coming through. Not bad. These particular sausages for me could do a bit more seasoning. Well they're not bad. 
The good thing about this particular dish is that you can stick in whatever sausage you like. There's a, a wide variety of vegetarian sausages, a wide variety of meat sausages, so you can put in these whatever you like. So, thanks for joining us at Food Tech 101. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your friends' friends, tell your mum, tell your dad, tell your brothers, tell your sisters. Again, let's see if we can crank Food Tech 101 up right the way up to a thousand subs and get people talking about food. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you'll never miss another Food Tech 101 video again. Our aim is to produce videos every Wednesday and every Sunday, every Wednesday at 6 and every Sunday at 12 midday. That's my aim and let's see if we can stick with that. Food Tech 101 is now also available on Facebook and Instagram and we have an email address which is um, admin at foodtech101.co.uk My name is Mr. Lionbird, but you can call me sir.